up here in your bear ship. We have a package we'd just like to put in your hand. This is your first time to Anchor of Life Church. Would you just hold your hand up real high for a second? This is your, you've never been here before. All right. We've got some here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you received the bulletin when you came in the house today, and we're going to go to prayer this morning. There's, if you'll open your bulletin to the page that says prayer needs for May the 19th, and I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over the house again this morning. We're going to pray over these needs. As we always do, if you're a guest today, we make it a, a, a corporate prayer every Sunday morning to lay hands upon these needs. You may not know a person on this piece of paper, but God knows every one of them individually, knows what's going on. Let me give you a report on Titus. He is still blind. He cannot see. But this week was the week that normally he takes a dip because of the cycle that the brain tumor takes him through. This week, for the first time in a long time, he made it through without any difficulty. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. We're still alive. We still believe in God. Uh, my daughter sent me a, a, a post yesterday of him. He's playing bongo drums. And uh, he, he, the music's in the background. So they play games that you don't have to have eyesight to see. So they keep him entertained. But I'm still believing for a miracle of God to touch him today. So lay your hands upon this sheet of paper. And let's believe the Lord this morning. I thank God Miss, Miss Linda went to the doctor in the Anderson this week. Got a great report from the doctor in Houston, Texas. And I thank God for that this morning. I praise the Lord for that. And God is at work in Anchor of Life Church. He's, he, let me say this to you. You may be a guest today, but I believe with all my heart, God still works miracles in the 21st century. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do some amazing things. So I'm going to release my faith. Would you release yours with me today? And let's agree together. Father, I thank you this morning for the ability and the privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace. To a God that understands and goes through, who has been already through every situation, every circumstance in life that, that we walk through on a daily basis. We lay hands upon this piece of paper, not in our name, not by our might or by our power, because we are powerless. But we serve a God that is all-powerful. We serve a God that is given a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and below the earth. And every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether it's cancer or diabetes or heart conditions or, 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 or blood issues or whatever it is or infection in people's bodies. No matter what the case is or what the situation is, or if it's lungs that are not operating correctly, by the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the healing power of God flow, and may the name of the Lord be glorified. And we release this morning the, the healing touch of God. I pray for Jacob in the hospital this morning. I pray you'll touch his leg there in the hospital in Brownsville. I pray that you'll speak life to that leg. Speak health to that leg. Speak deliverance to that leg. And work a miracle for the glory of God Almighty this morning. I pray in the glorious, mighty, powerful name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for hearing. I receive today and I believe by faith that we're going to have answers coming forth to the prayers that we pray today in faith believing. And I thank you for it this morning in the glorious name of Jesus. And now, Father, we close our time of prayer by praying the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. If you don't know it, it's on the screen. And would you say it out loud and loudly with me, please? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Remain standing with me, would you please? Take your Bibles in whatever form you may have them in, and hold them up high. We make this declaration every Sunday morning. This is what it says, said out loud and loudly. This is my Bible. I am 
what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I will never be the same. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Remember tomorrow morning, my Sarah is going in for hip surgery. I trust that you'll remember her in prayer, that you'll pray for her, and that, that she'll go through her surgery victoriously without any problems and issues whatsoever. Hebrews chapter number two. We're in a study. Now, my purpose of this book and this study is to give you nothing but Jesus. This book, that's what the book of Hebrews is all about. I said to you last Sunday morning that the name and the person of Jesus in this nation is under attack. There are people that hate that person, that hate his name. There are, there are people that don't want churches preaching about the name of Jesus. And I promise you, as long as I have a voice, I'm going to speak the name of Jesus without fear or intimidation whatsoever. Amen. I love the writer by the name of Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was, was, a, was a Chinese pastor who years ago, in fact, there, there's a contemporary song written about him, but they put him in prison because he preached the gospel in China. And while he was in China, he preached to the prisoners, so they cut his tongue out. He couldn't preach, he couldn't speak, so he began to write. And today in America and in, <clears throat> among Christian, if you like good books to read, I, I invite you to go to your bookstore, go to Amazon and find the books, any books by Watchman Nee and read them. He wrote powerful. It was so convicting that they eventually cut his hands off and he couldn't write any longer whatsoever. When he died, he died a martyr. He rejoices in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There'll be a day, folks, mark my word, there'll be a day when the great God Almighty hands that man a crown of righteousness and say to him, thank you for not being afraid to speak my name boldly and then in prayer to the glory of God. Well, I want to preach to you about Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not embarrassed by him. I make a bold declaration and I stand before you this morning that, that I say to you just like the writer to the book of Hebrews, Jesus is better than anything and anyone in the entire world this morning. That's the theme that the writer to the book of Hebrews was writing about. Hebrews chapter 2, the theme is, we're, we're talking about the theme that's on the screen, the superiority of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking, the theme word, when you read this chapter, you'll come across the word, you'll come across the word better. Anytime you find that word better, written by the, the author of this book, circle that word because it is the key word and the theme word throughout the 13 chapters of this book. In chapter number two, where we are this morning, in the first four verses, there is an exhortation. And then in verses five to 18, there is an explanation, like I did last Sunday morning. You're gonna need your Bibles. None of it's on the screen this morning. I wanna read you the first four verses, and then we'll break down the other four, the other verses in my message to you this morning. Chapter two of the book of Hebrews, I read to you from the NIV Bible. Here's what it says. We, here's the exhortation. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Now, here's the warning. Here's the exhortation. If you and I did not have the, the ability and sometimes the opportunity to drift away, the writer to the Hebrew Jewish believers, and not only to them, but to you and me as well, would have not given us this warning to say, be careful lest you find yourself moving too far away from the shore of salvation and you find yourself back doing what you've always done all of your life. So he gives me a warning in this verse by saying, be careful that you do not drift away. Verse 2, for since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment. Look at verse 3. This verse ought to be underlined in every Bible in this house this morning or marked some way on your phone. How shall we escape if we ignore or neglect so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and 
by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now, I want to, so that's the exhortation. I want to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes with you talking about the explanation from verse 5 to verse 18. There are four truths that I want to draw your attention to based on this fact. Why did Jesus even come to planet Earth? Why did God himself send his represent, send himself in the form of a baby? It was not an accident. It was not a mistake. It was not an accident that a young virgin became what was visited by an angel and was announced that she would be the carrier of the seed of the Holy Spirit and inside of her body she would bear the divine son of the living God. It was not an accident that the baby would be born in a stable, would be wrapped in clothes that were poor. The king of glory who had all of the wealth that the world could ever muster or even think about. And yet the Bible said he humbled himself and became a man, subjected himself to the forms of life like you and I know, yet had no sin inside of his body whatsoever. Why did Jesus come to planet Earth? Why did God send his only begotten son so that you and I could be saved? Why in the world did he show up? I used my theme this morning, and here's what I want to talk to you about for the, for the next few moments. Does Jesus know my name? Am I even on the radar of God's radar? Does God even know who I am? Does he even know my name? Is my name even significant to God the Father? I want to give you four truths out of the rest of this chapter this morning. Four things. Why did Jesus come to planet Earth? Here's the first one. Verse number 10. Here's the first one. He came that he might lead many sons to glory. Wow. Now, listen to the verse of Scripture. It's on the screen. It's also in your Bible. Again, take it from the NIV. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, now watch this, for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Notice a word that I want to draw your attention to. Should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Now wait a minute. Wasn't he already perfect? Because the Holy Spirit was his father. Joseph was not his father. Joseph was simply the surrogate dad that stepped into the role of an earthly father. But Mary and Joseph did not have relationships prior to the, to the birth of Jesus or even prior to becoming married. They were not intimate with one another. So Joseph was not the father of Jesus. The Holy Spirit was the father of Jesus. Let me prove it. You can, and I've said this to you before. Medical science will draw out what I'm about to, to, to relate to you. The blood of a baby, when a baby is born from a mother, the blood of a baby comes not from the mother. It always comes from the father. Go back and study medical science. A baby's blood comes from the daddy. I have a negative blood. I am one of the, I, there, there's a small percentage of people in the United States of America that have A negative blood. When they call for A negative blood, they want my blood because it is so rare. A most, most of us have B or A positive, but I have A negative. My daughter, one of my children has A negative blood. The blood of, that comes from the father to the child, or, or the blood of the baby gets their blood from the father. The Holy Joseph was not the father of Jesus. The Holy Spirit was the father of Jesus. Therefore, he was perfect. But I have, I have this, this verse draws attention to me and makes me stop for a second because the writer says in bringing, why did Jesus come to planet Earth? So that he could lead many sons, many daughters into glory. The glory that he had, it was fitting for that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. It was not the fact that he wasn't perfect. The word perfect should be the word complete because he needed to go through what you and I go through. How can he be a sympathetic father? How can he know what I feel like if he's never walked in my shoes? 
If he's never, if he's never been betrayed, if he's never been lied about, if he's never been heartbroken, if he's never been gone, if he's never been sick, if he's gone through, if I go through things in life and I go to God, I go to a God that does not understand what I'm going through. How in the world could he identify with what I'm facing on planet Earth? But he humbles himself and comes to planet Earth. Now watch very closely. I submit to you this morning, God in his great creative power could have easily yelled over the banisters of heaven and declared to us, I love you with everything in me. But that would have never reached the heart of mankind. He could have sent a facsimile. He could have sent a text message. He could have posted on Facebook for him to say, I love you with undeniable love. But that would have never reached me. But God so loved the world that he humbled himself and came among you and me in order that I, that, he, that, he, that the Son of God would become a son of man so that sons of men could become sons of God through the mighty working power of the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus come to planet Earth so he could be one of us so that you and I could become just like he is this morning? Made right in the eyes of God the Father. He came to lead many sons into glory. Here's the second thing. He came that he might be one of us. Look at the verse. Verse 11. Both, now watch this closely. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. Let me read that again. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. You know what he just said? Life produces life. An apple tree produces apples. An orange tree produces oranges. A holy God produces holy people. But you say, wait a minute, Pastor Gary. I'm not holy. Oh, yes, you are, dear. You're as holy as, as God is. Why? Because I'm not in Gary Stone. I am in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if I'm in Christ Jesus, all condemnation of my past is under the precious blood of a precious Savior who's making you and me holy on a daily basis. We are, holy. We, we are holy. We are being made holy. We will become holy in His likeness when we stand in His presence. But right now, the precious Holy Spirit, He came to planet Earth to become one just like you and I are. Now watch this. I love this last part of this verse. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Wow. I don't know if you've ever been to a family reunion and you have family members that show up you're not like this. I know you're not. <laughs> and you think to yourself, my God, I hope the world they don't see me sitting here. <laughs> I'm sure you don't have family like that. I hope they have not spotted me in the crowd. I don't want them to know that I'm here. Oh, you must have those people because you're laughing and smiling. <laughs> Both the one who makes people holy and those who are being made holy are of the same family. Watch this. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Wow. But you say, Pastor Gary, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know what you've done. He knows what you did. I don't need you to come confess to me. I do need you to confess, but you just confess to God. I don't need you to confess to everybody. I just need you to confess to God. I need you to take your sin and your problem and your issue to the Father. Because there is one sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Who I said to you last Sunday morning. It's, it, I gave you seven ways that Jesus is better. And he's sitting there praying for you. He prays for you when you blow it. He prays for you when you stumble. He prays for you when you don't feel like you're saved. But you already are saved. Why did Jesus come to planet earth? So I can be made like he is this morning. Through the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God he didn't send a text message. Thank God he didn't get to me through a facsimile. Thank God he was willing to humble himself and come among you and me, the likes of people like you and me, tabernacle among us and say, hey, I know where you've been. I know what you've done. I know how you've blown it. If I could say to the woman caught in the act of adultery, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. Think what I can do for you. After the cross, I did that for her before the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he came so he could identify with you and me. There's a third reason why. He came to 
free us from the bondage of death. Wow. Afraid to death. How many in this room, be honest with me, how many are afraid of death? When I see your hand. Yeah, of course you are. It's human nature. We go to, I'm a pastor, and I don't even like to go to a funeral. But it's part of what I do because we're afraid of death. We don't understand death whatsoever. It's something because it is a strange phenomenon to us. We walk up and look at the loved one in the casket and we, and we just can't compute it in our minds. Why did Jesus come? He came to free us from the bondage of death. Look at the verse of scripture. Here's what the Bible has to say. And I love what, what the writer in verse 14 has to say. Put it up there. Since the children have flesh and blood, now watch this, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, watch this, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Wow. I'm going to ask Claudia to shut the lights down. I'm going to play you a song that will say it better than I can ever say it in my life. Let, watch the words on the screen. Let it minister to your heart. Claudia, you ready? Let's do it. Listen, listen. Turn it up.
Jesus died on Calvary, those who had died in faith went to a place called Sheol. It was the place of the departed dead. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, said that when Jesus died, he went to that place and preached to them. He saw, John, on the Isle of Patmos, saw the resurrected Christ, and in his hands were a set of keys. And John heard Jesus say to him, John, I once was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And behold, I hold the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Why did Jesus come to planet Earth? So he could say to those who follow him in salvation, who become a disciple of the Master, there's no fear in death. It's just separation from the body into the presence of the Lord. I've often thought as a pastor because I have buried many a saint of God across this nation. And I've often thought I'd love to be in the cemetery for the day that Jesus calls us all home. What a remarkable occasion that would be. Because I say to you in part our English, English teachers, but there ain't no grave going to hold the body of a believer down. Because if Jesus rose from the dead, I declare to you this morning, you and I, if we're gone, you and I are going to be the first to rise first. And then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air. Oh, you get a privilege of coming out first so the rest of us are caught up in the air to be forever with the Lord. No fear. Why? Because there ain't no grave that can hold his body and there is no grave that can hold our body either. Here's the fourth reason Jesus came with this untrue. He came to free us from sin. That's why he came. To get rid of this thing called sin inside of our life. Look at the verse of scripture on the screen. For this reason, watch this. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Go on. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. He could identify. He can identify with the struggle of addiction. He can, that wasn't the fact that he was addicted, but he could identify. He was tempted at every point like as we are. He knew what it was like to be addicted to drugs. He knew what it was like to be addicted to alcohol. He knew what it was like to be addicted to Novocaine. He knew what it was like to be addicted to painkillers. He knew what it was like to be addicted to all kinds of things that you and I are addicted to. Yet without sin, and listen to this pastor this morning, he doesn't sit on the throne of heaven to condemn us whatsoever. When I come to him, all condemnation is gone, and the power of the Holy Spirit enters in to give you and me the ability to live and overcoming abundant life be the life that Jesus has deposited in every last one of us who call his name the name of Jesus. Look at the next screen. Does Jesus know my name? Is he even acquainted with me? Here's the answer to that question. It's on the screen with this I'm through. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. It's that simple. I know my sheep, not because you're a member of some certain denomination or some church, but because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. I say to you this morning, and I say to the Father in heaven, thank you, God, for sending Jesus for people just like us. Thank you, Jesus, for being willing to come to planet Earth for people just like you and me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing the gift of salvation to our hearts, because without him, we're eternally doomed to death. May we know him, and may he know us because of our relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, wow. From the depth of my soul this morning, from way down deep inside of my life, I cry out, thank you, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. 
Thank you for being willing to send him to this planet. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you that you were willing to come, not as, not as a king, but as a baby. Yet you are a king. You came as human in order to identify, to be a merciful and faithful high priest, sitting now at the right hand of the Father, there making intercession for us. Thank you for being willing to be beaten. Thank you for being willing to have your beard plucked out by mankind. Thank you for being willing to have stripes laid upon your back. Thank you for being willing to go to Calvary. Thank you for being willing to have nails driven in your hands. Thank you for being willing to have spikes nailed into your feet. Thank you for being willing to have a spear thrust into your side. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for dying for a person like me. But oh, more than that, thank you for coming back to life. That death could not destroy you. Hell could not keep you. The devil could not get rid of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you made one sweep through a garden tomb and you raised the lifeless body back from the dead. And today he sits exalted at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for every last one of us. Whether we're in this room, whether we're watching by internet or Facebook, you have been praying for this service already before we ever showed up. You've been calling our names in prayer. Jesus, thank you for knowing our names. My God, of all the billions of people on planet Earth, your word says you're angry with the sinners every day, but you love the saints. Oh, God, thank you for knowing our names because you said you're the good shepherd. I know my sheep. Thank you that I'm known by God in Jesus' precious name. Your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a moment. Nobody looking around. I don't know whether you know him or not, but I dare not let you out of this place without giving you an opportunity to make a confession before the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody looking around, just me and the Holy Spirit. But you say, Pastor Gary, I don't know him. I don't know this one who can I don't have an intimate relationship with him. I don't even know if he knows my name, but I want him to know my name today. Pastor Gary, would you pray with me and pray for me? You'd slip your hand up real quick like and just put it down anywhere over this room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand with me all over the room. Would you please stand with me to your feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that are going to be helping me pray are coming this morning, coming forward to stand here with me. Hilltop Praise Band is going to lead us in a praise and worship song, in an altar song for just a moment. I'm going to give you an opportunity, whether you lifted your hand or not, you struggle. You say, I don't know that he knows my name, but I need to solidify the fact that today he does, and I want him to know me. I want to know him. And I'm going to open these altars, whether you want to know him Spiritually, perhaps you even need prayer for physical healing. You need the Holy Spirit to touch you physically. You're welcome to come to any of us and we'll pray for you as well. So while he'll talk, praise fan sings, these altars are open. Feel free to come to any of us and we'll pray for you today. In Jesus' name, come. come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.